Hey, what's happening, everyone? Sir James coming at you guys with another video, and today is January 30th. And normally, when I say a date, it's usually for a special occasion like a launch of a collector's edition, or maybe it's a launch of a console. But in today's case, today is my birthday, which for those of you wondering, I am now officially. 27 years old which means at the end of this video i'm going to make my journey back to mother base and metal gear solid 5 the phantom pain to go ahead and get my birthday surprise which if you guys haven't played the game well you're pretty much going to get an idea of what happens when you go back to it on your birthday you get a little bit of a surprise and depending on where you are in the game you might have a little bit of extra compared to what i show you guys but anyways, uh, in today's video, I thought I'd go ahead and kind of share with you guys a little bit of a haul. Uh, again, because today's my birthday, there's not much going on. There's a new PlayStation VR game that's coming out tomorrow. Can't remember the name top of my head, but I did upload a, a video trailer for it. It starts with a D. Um, looks pretty interesting. I think it's going to be like 10, 15 bucks, give or take, so not too expensive. It looks a bit of fun where you have your move controllers based on what I'm seeing off the trailer, where one of them is fire or ice, depending on how you are handling them. So it's going to be an interesting on rails type of game. Looks pretty cool. So I'm looking forward to it. So anyways, for this video, uh, I just want to go ahead and kind of share with you guys a video game haul. I have a couple PS4 games. The rest are PlayStation 3 because I'm building on this collection back here. And there might be a chance I might show a game that I've shown you guys before. Uh, I just can't remember on top of my head what I've already shown you guys because, again, there's just so many PS3 games I got uh, not too long ago. And, of course, a small little update. And to address something uh, in regards to a collector's edition that I was supposed to unbox last week on Monday. So let's go ahead and get this started out of the way. I don't want to make the video too long because I just want to kind of relax on wine today. Um, so first off, starting off with the PlayStation 4 pickups, we have Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Now, you guys know I was going to be getting the collector's edition, which I'll explain what happened to that towards the end uh, once I get done through this haul here. But as far as Resident Evil 7 goes, I got this on PlayStation 4 because of the whole PlayStation VR, which is an exclusive to Sony for at least the first year. It should be coming to the HTC Vive and all that, which I'm actually looking forward to it coming out on the other platforms because honestly, VR is probably the best way to experience the game. Now, I went into this completely blind. I've only played the two demos. One was on the demo disc for PlayStation VR, and the one that we all have been playing prior to that, where they kept updating it so we get to explore other little elements. But I went into it completely blind, not watching any, I didn't even watch the launch trailer that I uploaded. But again, completely blind, and the game is pretty freaky, all right? So uh, there's been a couple of times where I just, you know, couldn't play the next day because uh, I was having a little bit of a, uh, nightmares if you will so i just kind of had to ease up on that a little bit because i didn't play long sessions either i kind of took breaks and stuff like that i did 30 minute segments and then i played it the next day but it, it messed with my mind a little bit i'm not going to lie about that but definitely a great game to play if you have not seen resident evil 7 have not got to play it yet i recommend going into it blind to get the full experience of it but again it's a completely fun title Next up, of course, is Kingdom Hearts 2.8 Remix. And as you guys know, I love Kingdom Hearts. And if you don't know what comes in this one, because obviously it's not Kingdom Hearts 3 that we're still waiting for, you get Kingdom Hearts Birth by, I mean, not Birth by Sleep, that's in 2.5. You get Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance, which was normally a Nintendo 3DS title, which you can now play on the PS4. What's nice about it is that Dream Drop Distance is actually in 60 frames. So the game runs butter, butter smooth and it's a fun way to experience it. And I like what they did with the intro video because on the 3DS in the opening, Mickey was on the bottom screen, you know, doing his orchestrating the music and the things were happening on top. It's kind of cool how they incorporated that for the PS4 copy. You also get the Kingdom Hearts 0.2 Birth by Sleep. So you do get a Birth by Sleep segment in here. Uh, this one is probably going to be the closest that you're going to get to a Kingdom Hearts 3 experience, to be honest. Um, but it's actually a fun title. It's actually pretty short. It's anywhere between three or four hours, to be honest. Um, again, I was kind of bummed out about the length, but again, it's kind of whatever, if you will, or tech demo for the upcoming Kingdom Hearts 3. But that one was a fun one as well. And you can also get a movie, Kingdom Hearts X or Kingdom Hearts Key Backstory, which uh, will leave a lot of people confused. Kingdom Hearts games have always been a little bit confusing here and there. It was also a pain to play these. 
because um, back when it first came out, it started on the PS2, then the game started going on all these other platforms. You had to buy a new console just to play that next Kingdom Hearts game. You know, you had to get a Game Boy Advance, a Nintendo DS, Nintendo 3DS, a PlayStation Portable, and then it finally came to the PlayStation 3 and now the PlayStation 4. So again, it's a little, the games are everywhere, I should say, but it's nice to have these collection packs to kind of get it all in one system, which I know 1.5 and 2.5 will be coming to PS4 in about a couple months, so I can't wait to get that. As I have them on the PS3, it's up here in those red cases. Uh, now, with the Kingdom Hearts, that was the limited edition, which you get this exclusive Disney's pin. So that's pretty neat. So there is that. Uh, next up, let's go ahead and get to the PlayStation 3 pile here. Uh, this one, I don't recall if I showed you guys this one. I might have, but if I didn't, cool. If I did, I apologize. Again, it's kind of hard to remember what I showed you guys already and what I did not. So we have Dragon Age Origins here. Uh, if you haven't played this one, this is the first installment. I really recommend this one. This is probably one of the, the main RPGs that I put many hours into made so many different characters, tried out different elements. It's just endless hours of fun. If you can get the Game of the Year edition, it has like the expansion to everything. There's like many hours to keep you interested for come to, for quite some time. I know this is also available on the Xbox and the PC, so you have many different choices of platforms to play it on. So kind of keep that in mind. Next up is a Tom Clancy's game known as Tom Clancy's Hawks 2. Uh, to be honest, as far as the Hawks game, I love the first one, but when it comes to the second one, I didn't really enjoy the second one too much. Uh, I didn't really remember when I picked it up, but because uh, I was trying to get some of the sets and kind of complete different things. But I was replaying this, and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot. I never really liked this one, but I got this one for cheap. I got it for like a couple dollars free shipping. Uh, next up is the Brothers in Arms Hell's Highway. I... I actually do have the collector's edition for this one, uh, which came with a little bit of an, an action figure, which will, he came decked out with his parachute and everything. It's actually pretty cool, um, but I also had like a little comic. But again, Brothers in Arms, uh, the Hell's Highway is a fun title. You actually get the command squads, put them in different areas, flank enemies. It's actually a pretty cool title. Uh, we also have Soul Calibur. I don't know my Roman numeral so I don't know what number this is but you have Darth Vader as a playable character and you also have Star Killer but there is that one I remember for uh, Soul Calibur games uh, be between the PlayStation and Xbox like if you're on Xbox you got to play as Yoda and PlayStation you got Darth Vader uh, so that was always interesting thing to do uh, next up is the remainder of the games we have Dead Space 2, uh, I apologize, I forgot to remove the sticker, but there is Dead Space 2. I also have this on Origin, uh, the reason why I have it again on PlayStation, because my little brother comes out here and plays as well. And of course, Dead Space 3, this is the limited edition. There's that one. Um, as far as Dead Space 3 goes, uh, I have a little bit more memories of this one compared to the second one. Is of course, you have the, the whole co-op experience, but it wasn't as crazy or as scary as the second one, or definitely not the original. Uh, which reminds me, I still need to get the first one. Uh, next up is some Crisis games. We have Crisis 2. I've actually enjoyed these too. Uh, I've kind of hope I would like to see a new one. But I think as far as the story goes, it's pretty much over. Then, of course, you have Crisis 3. Next up, you guys know I love the Battlefield games. And pretty much whatever system they're on, I've always had it for consoles. And I also have the Battlefield games on PC. Like, for example, Battlefield 1, I currently have on PC. But here, one of my favorite games... And I, w I want a third one uh, for this installment, and that is Battlefield Bad Company. I love the Bad Company games. They're great. The multiplayer is fantastic. I remember reading in a report because how everyone wants a Bad Company 3, and um, the developers who, whatever, didn't understand why people liked the Bad Company games. And I'm pretty sure everyone's made videos as to why. Then, of course, we have the Bad Company 2. Uh, which, as far as the multiplayer goes, to be honest, uh, PC, it's still alive very much. But consoles, 
Um, at least from what I played on PlayStation, there's sometimes there are, are servers that are slightly full, but then people end up leaving midway or too soon because they're getting dominated and then the servers become dead. So as far as the, the lifespan of the game for consoles, at least for PlayStation side, yeah, it's it's a mixed bag, but it's pretty much below. PC, it's definitely on the high ups, uh, and of course, with the this game is now backwards compatible for the Xbox One, um, and I've had similar results to that because I also have it. Um, I don't have a case for it though because I got it on eBay for like a dollar free shipping, but um, it's because it didn't have a case. But even on the Xbox One or 360, if you will. Uh, the, the servers for that as far as l the lifespan, not many people play, a lot of people play uh, Battlefield 3 still, but not so much Bad Company 2. And speaking of Battlefield 3, here is Battlefield 3. Again, a lot of people play this, whether it's the PlayStation 3, PC, or Xbox 360, or the backwards com um, compatibility. Uh, but again, this one is still live and active, but just not the Bad Company games. I would like it to be the other way around, to be honest. Uh, next up, of course, is Final Fantasy XIII 2. Um, when it comes to Final Fantasy XIII, people have mixed opinions about this. I honestly like the Final Fantasy XIII games. You guys know I already picked up thirteen one, and then, of course, the um, Lightning Returns, which is the third and final one. So here's the second one to go with it. It took a while because I was waiting for one with the case. Uh, GameStop did have one before without the case, but thankfully enough, I waited and one came in. Now this one, this one is a hard to get one. That is called Nier. So there it is. Now for this game, I, I picked it up at GameStop. I used a coupon, so I pretty much got this for like under $15. But I remember uh, looking this up and um, as you guys know, there is a new one coming out on the PlayStation 4. It's a PS4 exclusive, I, I remember. Um, but when I was looking up videos for like recommendations or hidden gems, stuff like that, people mentioned Nier and I was like, wait a minute, there was a Nier game on PS3? I didn't know about, I, I knew about the upcoming PS4 version, but I didn't know there was one on PS3 and I was like, oh, I have to go check that out and I was looking for one and I noticed that a lot of locations, at least for GameStop, if I were to pick it up in store, or pretty much sold out and the nearest one would have been like 70 miles or whatever and then when I was looking on eBay the ones that used to be a lowered price like I've seen some for like 25 to 30 dollars for a buy now price with a little bit of shipping cost of course uh, those were starting to go down and then the cost of it started to go up on eBay and I was like holy crap what the hell is going on I managed to finally get one through GameStop again for less than 15 dollars with a coupon and um, but here it is Again, near this is actually a really fun game. I haven't beaten the game yet, um, but I'm looking forward to what I'm going to experience because I heard the ending is pretty crazy and there's like a choice you have to make. And of course, another one which I would love for this to come to PS4, honestly, and that is the Metal Gear Solid HD Collection. Now I'm a, now of course I'm fully aware that Hideo Kojima is no longer with Konami, which I need to get like a black marker or something like that. Just cross the Konami name out there um, but I love the Metal Gear Solid games uh, even uh, the Phantom Pain was fun but my favorite Metal Gear Solid game for those of you wondering is Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater that one to me is probably the best Metal Gear game today story was great the development characters everything about it if you haven't played this I recommend it or if you're looking for one to play play Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater it's definitely worth it but if you want to follow along the storyline make sure you play all the other titles like Metal Gear Solid 1 on uh, the PS1 which you can get the classic version but there's that one there's also another pack uh, for the PS3 it's called the Ultimate Edition where you basically get all of the main Metal Gear Solid games not the Phantom Pain because obviously that came out way before that collection pack and of course you also don't get Metal Gear Solid Rising because Konami didn't really work on that one if I recall I mean not Konami but Kojima uh, but feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on that one again some of my information is a little bit uh, wacky today because it's just hard to remember all this information so that's pretty much it in terms of the haul. Now, one thing I do want to explain is whatever happened to the Resident Evil 7 Collector's Edition that I was supposed to unbox last week, this is what had happened, and this is why I made a decision that I did, is that I had everything planned out prior to that day, all right? In terms of how I was going to film the unboxing, uh, everything laid out, what kind of camera angles I wanted, everything, all because IGN had an early unboxing since uh, early December. 
everything planned out. I go in to finalize my receipt and then um, the GameStop manager at the time informs me that there was no collector's edition in stock. Again, this is uh, pre uh, ringing your receipt, all right? This is before we're able to pick up our games. It's not like they had mine and sold it, which GameStop, just so you guys know, is not to blame for this because it was another company, which I'll get to in just a moment. So he was a bit shocked and um, he went to the back to kind of double check something because maybe there was a little issue or maybe it was, um, you know, someone didn't put like information correct. And he came back out, went back in. There's a couple of district managers there and stuff like that. And then he made a couple calls, looked up some information to find out there's no GameStop within my area, within driving distance at all. And I heard that this is for a big issue for a lot of locations. Some areas did get them, some areas didn't. But the point is, there was no GameStops within the area that was getting them. Uh, there was no truck on the way. So I figured if it was like one or two days late, not a big deal. He was going to hook me up with a copy, and then I could just get a full refund uh, on that one to go pick it up. But there was no truck delivery anytime soon. It was going to be anywhere between one to three weeks of the collector's edition arriving in store. So it's like, shit, now the thing that I just planned on my channel that I promised you guys I cannot do. So what am I supposed to do? And um, I just made a decision to just cancel the collector's edition. I mean, as far as the collector's edition go, it's not like it was something that I was super, super pumped up for. I was super pumped for the game, but as far as the collector's edition go, I thought the music box was pretty cool. But it wasn't like something that I was super excited for or something that I really, really wanted to get. Because, you know, in the end, I might be able to get the music box later on down the road on eBay for like 50, 60 bucks, which I wouldn't mind play, uh, paying for. And um, so I decided to just cancel it, and that's when I just got the standard copy of the game, picked up Kingdom Hearts, uh, and then I put the money that was left over uh, to pay off for Honor, and of course also to pay off portion of the other collector's edition that I'm getting, uh, which is for the Horizon Zero Dawn. And that's pretty much how that situation went. So as far as collector's edition goes, we have the Horizon Zero Dawn that I'll be getting, uh, we also have the stuff coming out in March, the Nintendo Switch, uh, which I'll be unboxing for you guys. But that's pretty much it. So if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Like I said, now 27 years old. Pretty soon I'm going to need a walking cane because I'm starting to get old. But I'll see you guys next time because my battery is about to die here. So have a good day. <laughs> Happy birthday, Snake. <laughs> Happy birthday.